Okay, good. So let's um, just read Galatians 3 and verse 3. So where, uh, and we've studied this before, where Paul says, Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? Okay. And in the same way, uh, we, we saw where um, Paul writes further and he says uh, about the spirit. You know, this only I want want to know. You know, how did you receive? <clears throat> how did you receive the uh, the work of the Spirit? Was it by faith or by the hearing of the law? Right. So, in the same line, he asks. You know, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the flesh? So that's the question that um, we need to ask ourselves even today. You know, having begun, having started the work uh, in the Spirit, are we? now trying to accomplish things in the in the flesh you know like having started with uh, faith having started with uh, dependence on the spirit of god for everything you know for ministry for uh, uh, revelation for <clears throat> for winning of souls everything you know uh, having started in the spirit are we now trying to accomplish things in the flesh Right, manipulate things in the flesh, and uh, yeah, the the bigger question today for us is what, <clears throat> how is our dependence on the spirit of God? Like, to what extent are we depending on the spirit of God? Is our dependence coming down, or are we truly, you know, depending on the spirit of God for each and everything, right? especially uh, in ministry? Okay, so let's let's pray and. Uh, Let's ask the Lord to bring us back to depending upon Him and depending upon, <clears throat> excuse me, the work of the Spirit. Father God, we, Lord, even as we look at that question, Lord, that having begun in the Spirit, are we so foolish to accomplish things in the flesh? Master, we, we know that um, it is from you, Lord, by you and through you, Lord, all things, oh God. And uh, we cannot attribute any any success uh, in the flesh, Lord, by ourselves, Lord. For you said, oh God, for without you we can do nothing. And Lord, even as we ask ourselves today, reflect and see, Father God, in our own lives, Lord, how much is it self-dependence? How much is it, is it uh, Lord, uh, the strength of our, uh, Lord, of our own, physical ability or natural ability, God, rather than the work of the Spirit. And Father, we know that you also lead us, Lord, <clears throat> to do things, Lord, in the natural uh, and through all the abilities that you've given us. But Lord, let our dependence be on the work of your Spirit. For we have started purely, Lord, by the work of your Spirit, Lord. Yes, Father God, we we surrender ourselves, we yield ourselves, Lord, to the work of your Spirit. We, we yield ourselves to, Lord, the leading of your Spirit, O God. We yield ourselves to the power of your Spirit, O Father God. And Master, we pray that, um, Lord, there will be much uh, manifestation and display of your power, of your splendor, of the gifts of the Spirit, of the expression of the Holy Spirit, Lord, in our lives and through our lives, Lord. Yes, Master, we pray that you will have unhindered Lord, un, uh, Lord, blocked, um, Lord, uh, expression, Lord, unquenched work of the Holy Spirit, Lord, uh, you have the right of way, Lord, and uh, I pray that it will be unhindered, Lord, by anything of our own flesh, of anything of our own things, God, of our own making, have your way, Lord, we are yielded to you, Lord, we thank you, in Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Okay, <clears throat> let's continue from uh, where we stopped. We stopped with Philippians chapter 2, sorry, th chapter 3, and it was verse 14, right? Where uh, Paul says, Paul talks about uh, uh, putting confidence in the flesh and putting confidence in, um, 
you know other qualifications and so on and uh, and paul says that you know if anyone has to put confidence in the flesh i more so and he talks about how he was circumcised how he you know you know about his lineage he was a pharisee uh, from you know from uh, uh, who who came through the lineage of uh, the tribe of benjamin and uh, you know according to the law blameless and all that and then he goes on to say you know whatever things were gained for me these i have counted as uh, as uh, loss for the sake of christ and in, and he says that you know everything when compared to the excellence of the knowledge of christ it's i compare it uh, when when compared with the knowledge of christ uh, you know i've i've lost a lot of things like maybe power prestige privilege <clears throat> everything he says i count them as as rubbish i count them as dung okay and uh, and then we saw we, this is where we close right we saw uh, verse 12 where, he, where paul writes uh, paul says that not that i have already attained or i am already perfected right i have not come to that place of you know perfection i have not come to that place of apprehended everything but i press on you know i move on um that i may lay hold of that right that i may hold have a tight grip tight hold of those things for which the lord jesus has laid hold hold of me okay so the lord has got a you know grip on me and for the sake of that i want to hold on to those things you know those very things for which he has laid hold of me i want to have a strong grip and uh, and uh, i press towards the goal <clears throat> for the prize of the upward call of god in christ you know there for the prize of the upward call of god now god has called me and it's a high calling and i press towards that goal you know i which means that there there could be certain things uh, coming against there could be certain things uh, prevailing trying to prevail against that uh, against me but i press towards i press on and i press towards that goal for the upward call of christ Okay, so that is what we uh, saw. Okay, um, let me just try and project the notes. Okay, right. Okay. So um, when he says, "I." press towards a goal for the prize of the upward call so you know in paul's words and in paul's proper paul the the call of god itself is uh, something to be treasured something like a prize like the very call of god the upward call of god itself is something that he highly treasured right and verse 15 okay let's start there from there <clears throat> therefore let us as many as are mature have this mind and if in anything you think otherwise god will reveal even this to you nevertheless to the degree that we have already attained let us walk by the same rule let us be of the same mind so he's talking to you know uh, mature believers here so he's saying you know those of us who are mature let us have this mind or let us have this mindset or let us have this thinking uh, let us have this pattern of thinking okay so um, or let us uh, you know uh, uh, let, let us have this kind of um, mindset okay so what is he saying um, when he says you know he is talking to the ones who are mature which means uh, who are come to a state of maturity okay uh, come to a state of uh, perfection or completeness okay so let's have this mind let us have this understanding let us be wise Okay. let us have this um you know this opinion or kind of thinking what is it the same thing that he's uh, shared earlier he says that let us you know the you know this is what i do i press on forgetting those things that are behind <clears throat> and going on for those things that are ahead <clears throat> i press on um forgetting you know what's behind i press on for the upward for the prize of the upward call of christ 
upward call of God in Christ. So let us be of let us let us who are mature have the same mind. Okay, for those of us who are mature, let's have this same kind of mindset that you forget those things that are behind us. You know, it could be regrets, it could be failures, it could be pain, it could even be accomplishments in the flesh. Right? He's he's talking about several other things, right? Like, you know, these were all my qualifications and this is my background, this is my experience. And so even it could be even that, right? Uh, which are kind of slowing us down or preventing us from laying hold of Christ or laying hold of the call fully. Um, so he's saying that, you know, I forget those things, you know, or it could even be accomplishments, good things, accomplishments, that we just holding on, we just staying there and not moving forward. Okay, so Paul is saying that let's let's move forward. Okay, so you have this mind, you are mature, you have this mind. Okay. It says that nevertheless, to the degree that we have already attained, okay, uh, to the to the extent that uh, we have already matured, or to the extent that we have already received revelation. So let us walk in the same mind. Let us walk by the same rule. Okay. So in the same mind, meaning, you know, let there be unity, let there be oneness of heart, oneness of mind. Uh, to the to the extent that we have already become mature. Okay, let us come, we have come to that place of maturity. Let us walk in the same mind. And uh, uh, he says, let us walk by the same rule. Um, before that, uh, in verse 15, he says something very important. If in anything you think otherwise, okay, meaning that if in any of these things that I have shared, if in any of these things that I have, uh, you know, uh, I have taught right now, if you think otherwise, or if you think that, um, oh, sorry, uh, if you think that, uh, you know, you, you don't seem to come to a, a, an agreement, or you don't seem to come to a uh, 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 a sense of a place of unity. Okay, so he's saying, you know, if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal even this to you. Okay, so he's saying, you know, just relax. If you think otherwise, God will reveal. You know, as long as you're sincere, you know, that's what is. You know, if if, if you're seeking the Lord, and as long as uh, you know. Uh, your posture of the heart, you know, you're teachable, you're humble, you know, that's that's not something that he mentions, but he's saying, you know, as long as you're pressing forward, you know, we are having the same mind, you're pressing forward, you're forgetting those things that are behind, you're going for the upward call of God and uh, Christ, you're considering that as a, your prize. As even if you think that, okay, I'm not able to understand or I'm not able to have that kind of, you know, mindset uh, or kind that kind of thinking that Paul is having, um, you know, don't worry about it, saying God will reveal even this to you. Okay. Um, so since you, the, since you're having the other thing, you know, since you're having uh, the other mindset, which is to go after God, which is to pursue him, which is to hold tightly to those things for which he has laid hold of you. And you're considering the call of God itself, like, uh, you know, the, the, the upward call of God itself, like the prize, the goal. So, don't worry, God will reveal this to you. Okay, so that's um, I mean that's something which is uh, refreshing. That's something which is a relief for all of us. You know, uh, sometimes you're saying, God, I'm not able to have, I'm not able to be that mature. You know, I'm not able to be like that person. You know, don't worry. As long as this is in place, as long as you're pursuing God with all your heart, as long as you're going after the things of God for which uh, you know Jesus Christ came and and uh, you know pursued you and laid hold of you. God will reveal this to you. You will be in a place that is teachable and God will reveal this to you. Okay. Okay. Verse 17. Brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk <clears throat> as you have us for a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is in their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, 
from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body, that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able to, he is, he is able even to subdue all things to himself. <clears throat> okay, so it says, brethren, join in following my example. You've seen that he, he has uh, said that uh, several times in the past, also in the, you know, in the other epistles, we saw that he's saying, you know, uh, be imitators of God uh, as dear children, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? Um, so uh, he, has, he has said this. So here also, he's, Paul is saying that um, in all things, right, uh, join in following my example. Okay, so um, he's saying the way I live, the way I uh, teach, the way I walk, the way I pursue Christ, join in following my example. Okay, so which is a very, quite a bold statement again, and a statement of humility, which means that he was careful about how he walked and uh, uh and how he, uh, you know, the way he walked uh, in Christ. So the, the kind of life that he lived, you know, he had nothing to hide, uh, nothing that, that was in secret. Everything was open and, uh, and by, so he had this great boldness to say, um, imitate me, you know, my example, you follow it. But he also says that um, he, he talks about others who walk like me. Okay, there are others, you know, uh, he talks about Timothy, to take care of Timothy, or, you know, he, in other place, he talks about Titus, he says, a fellow worker, and, and so on. So there are others whom he recommends, and he says, you know, who walk like this, who live their life like this, who minister like this, uh, take, a, make a note of those, uh, you know, observe, and uh, make a note of those, and he, he is the word, you know, uh, observe, contemplate, or, uh, you know, you uh, direct your attention, fix your eyes, uh, be focused, um, look at their lives, look at their life example. And um, you have this as a pattern, like you have this as a, as a template, right? You have this as an example. So you can actually follow, you know, you have this, it's like, a, you know, it's like an impression, or let's say, um, you know, um, you, let's say you have a, a piece of clay and then, you know, you, you press something, you, you put your hand and press into it, it forms an impression, right? Your palm with uh, the five fingers, it forms, an, um, uh, it forms an impression in the clay. So he's saying that that is what he's saying, you know, so you have us as an example, you know, the way we live our life and everything, it's like, it's like something that is visible, something that you see. It's like that impression, a mark. So you have us as an example, and you have us as a pattern. So join in following our example, okay? Uh, which is uh, which obviously say which, which obviously means that living a godly life, um, you know, pursuing uh, living a holy life, living a godly life, um, and not pursuing the things of the flesh and so on, right? So he says that. Then he says, for many walk. There are many who are walking. And he says, you know, I and um, and I say weeping. Right? So he's 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 really not uh, proud of their life, and he's really um, you know moved uh, for the sake of others and for their you know for the sake of all those people who are living such a life. He's saying, you know, um, they are not living according to Christ. They are so-called ministers, saying that uh, you know they are uh, many, and I say weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. Okay, so um, again, you know, very harsh words, uh, but he's saying with a heart of uh, uh, it comes from a heart where it is, which is broken because he's seeing their lives. He's seeing the way they live their lives, the way they minister. And he's saying, I say, I tell you weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ. And uh, why are they enemies of the cross of Christ? Because they are not for the purposes of Christ. Okay. 
they are actually living for themselves and he says that their end is destruction okay their end is destruction because um, uh, they are living for their own belly for their own appetite for their own selfish needs okay so um, whose god is their belly so that is the thing you know um, uh, whose god you know or whom they consider to be the highest one okay, whom they consider worthy of worship is their own appetite is their belly is their flesh okay so so which is um, which is very sad for him he's saying they are enemies of the cross they are enemies of the purpose of christ um and he's saying whose end is ex- uh, destruction okay so they think that they're going to have a glorious end but no their end is destruction because they are not mindful of the things of god and obviously they are transgressing obviously they are you know um uh sinning so he's saying you know their end is destruction their god is their belly okay so it is uh, which means that something has replaced god okay something has replaced god and what is it it is uh, it has become an idol what has become an idol their own fleshly appetites their own needs um <coughs> excuse me so that is what has <coughs> excuse me so that is what has replaced god in their lives okay so instead of pursuing god they're going after their own desires instead of pursuing god they're going after their own fleshly appetites instead of pursuing righteousness and holiness they are going you know they have replaced all that with their own um you know their own needs and their own desires <coughs> excuse me sorry so uh <clears throat> so they're saying um, suppose saying that you know this is what it is so they they are in this destruction their god is their belly and whose glory is in their shame okay so what is it so they are glorifying things that they should actually be ashamed of okay their glory or you know you, you see how the values have twisted right how the priorities have changed everything has has changed right so they their glory or the things that they were glorifying about was actually something that they should be ashamed of right now these were probably lust of the flesh uh the, the ungodly values um yeah. so so he's saying they should be ashamed of it their glory is in their shame so they are proud of it right they think that they are freed they are liberated but they are actually slaves to their own flesh slaves to the lust of the flesh okay so so these are the these are their priorities and what else you know the other thing that he says is who set their mind on earthly things okay so their mind is not mindful of the things of god they are not mindful of what moves god okay what god's priorities are okay you know when we um when we look at matthew chapter uh, chapter 5 we see the lord actually uh, exhorting teaching and he's saying seek first what the kingdom of god okay the rule and reign of god and his righteousness right no i'm sorry matthew 6 <clears throat> matthew 6 and uh, verse 33 seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added so this is god's priority the lord's priority he says seek first the kingdom seek first his righteousness right so which these people were not doing and if you remember when the lawyer came and asked the lord lord what is the first commandment um then he said you know very clearly that you will love the lord your god with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul and your strength 
and the second is like if you love your neighbor mm-hmm. as yourself okay so uh, the lord is very clear you know the first thing is about him the first priority is about his kingdom is about him so here paul is saying you know i say weeping that they are enemies of the cross so the enemies of the cross for the enemies of the cross the god is their belly for the enemies of the cross they are glorying in the things they should be ashamed of their glory is their shame for the enemies of the cross the end is destruction but they don't realize it for the enemies of the cross the their mind is set their focus and what they give importance is only the earthly things okay so saying these are enemies and i'm i weep for them you know i say this weeping because i'm really disturbed i'm really um, sad to to even mention this right and verse 20 <clears throat> for our citizenship is in heaven okay so they are earthly minded they are mindful of the earthly things and it is in direct contrast to the lord's commandment okay now we need to understand so you know when we seek the lord okay when we when we seek first his kingdom now there would be certain earthly things that you need to take care of you know the lord has appointed uh, certain things certain earthly things you know what is it like maybe family right responsibilities uh, maybe uh, employment right maybe god is you know to provide for the family to take care of the family all those things you know these are things that that are spiritual you know but you need to interact on the earth right to work maybe god is you know uh, god is providing for our needs through the work um through the employment and um, and we need to interact we need to you know maybe it's a business maybe it's uh, you know maybe it's someone who's uh, god has called to be in the government maybe someone who's god has called to be in you know in various spheres of influence um and um, and yeah so we can't say those are earthly things i will not do it you know it's not that in seeking god god has established certain people so we need to know the difference so when we say okay the mind is set on earthly things the mind is set on things that are not on the mind of god that are not on the heart of god right that is that is not the kingdom of god the whom which things that god has never uh, you know that's not god has called that person to do uh, they are doing things that um, that uh, uh, doing things where the kingdom of god the rule and reign of god and the things of righteousness are far away right? are far away so they they are carnally minded fleshly minded and things that they pursue things uh, out of their own desire fleshly desire okay so so that's something that we need to make a difference you know it's not that okay i you know i don't now t- need to take care of family or i don't need to take care of you know work i can do second best Uh, i'm you know during the work time i'm going to do ministry no no it's not that right so uh, we need to know the difference what is our priority okay um okay so saying our citizenship is in heaven okay we are actually look at it this way we are citizens of heaven okay we are living on the earth but we are citizens of heaven therefore uh we should be our mind you know we should be sit- heaven minded we need we we are on the earth but need we need to be heavenly minded okay so so he's saying you know we eagerly wait for the savior or we are expectant of the lord's return we eagerly wait for the savior the lord jesus christ and what will he do he will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body now that's a reality re, re, sorry reality we we so he's saying you know we eagerly expect the lord's return and one of the reasons is this that he is going to transform our earthly body our lowly body into something that is glorious into something that is you know uh, with which is conforming to his glorious body you're going to be like him according to the working by which he is able even he's able even to subdue all things to himself according to the working of his holy spirit according to the working 
uh, that you know his all powerful his uh, creative uh, miraculous supernatural power that is working in us right so he's uh, according to his working that he is able to do this he is able even to subdue all things to himself okay so he will change he will transform our lowly body and uh, according to his working okay? the, and the word used there in the greek which means effective working efficient working you know uh, and also this word when whenever it's used it's it's referring to the supernatural power of god not the power of man right it's not the strength of man it's referring to the supernatural power of god the work of god so he's saying the effective working of his power okay the according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself right because uh, he is the lord he is the sovereign lord so everything else comes under his authority right everything else uh, will come under uh, his authority he is able to do that <clears throat> he is able to subdue all things uh, unto himself okay so um, so that's uh, so that's where we see the end of chapter 3 okay so let's begin with chapter 4 <clears throat> so chapter 4 he says therefore my beloved and longed for brethren my joy and crown okay. therefore my beloved and again you know we see that paul uh, uh, you know treats them or uh, uh, communicates with them with a lot of uh, affection and with a lot of respect right so he's saying therefore my beloved and longed for brethren right so um, and he says uh, my joy and crown okay so not only are they uh, you know he's uh, affectionately addressing them in this manner but he's also saying that you are my joy right? um, i experience joy every time you know i think of you i interact with you you are my joy and crown okay so the, the he's talking about the prize that is given to an athlete so those days uh, when you know in the athletics in the uh, you know in the, in these kinds of uh, competitions they used to give a, a wreath a, a laurel, laurel wreath uh it is typically a, a roman tradition uh, greco roman tradition they will give the winner you know uh, uh something like that and it was of high value valued very highly <clears throat> and it was given for you know those who achieve that so he's referring to that you know something that is given uh in winning or something that is given in accomplishing a particular goal so he's saying you are my joy and you are my crown right so it was a crown of achievement right um and uh, um is it's something that someone who has won the race someone who had run the race and someone who you know uh, um successfully uh, won the race so who receives that crown so so all is saying you know you are my joy you are my crown So saying you are my joy you are my crown so stand fast in the lord beloved stand fast in the sense you need to be established and you need to be standing fast the opposite of standing fast is when you are shaken when you are moved okay you're not firm um you're shaken okay, so he's uh, he's talking about the opposite of that okay which is to stand firm be unshakable it also means to persevere and right? keep going without falling keep going without um stopping right you persevere you know that's what perseverance is right you're not you're not stopping your journey right you're continuing your journey you're persisting you're persevering so he's saying um therefore Uh, my joy and crown stand fast in the lord beloved no, when it comes to the lord you stand fast you know persevere persist be firm uh, be unwavering stand fast in the lord okay then he talks about uh, 
in the in the next few verses he talks about he uh, a few people and he gives some instructions okay, let's look at that um chapter 4 verse 2 i implore yodia and i implore sintai to be of the same mind in the lord and i urge you also true companion help these women who labored with me in the gospel with clement also and the rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life rejoice in the lord always again i will say rejoice let your gentleness be known to all men the lord is at hand be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through christ jesus so some you know some valuable um, instructions some deep revelations uh, paul is sharing here so he's saying i implore you know i i beg i beseech uh, these two women you know he's talking about sintai and uh, sintai and yodia is saying let them be of the same mind i implore them to be of the same mind so obviously something had happened maybe they were not of the same mind they were not agreeing with one another so he's saying i implore i i beg that they would be of the same mind same mind in the lord right when it comes to the matters of the lord when it comes to things of the lord i i beg uh, i implore them to be of the same mind and then he says and i urge you also true companion right um so this person uh, who is he, uh, we don't know who he's referring to as the true companion but he's saying you know i urge you also true companion okay? and he's addressing this person um obviously the reader would know uh, who uh, he's referring to or the church would know who he is referring to saying help these women who labored with me labored with me in the gospel okay so saying help them to come to that place of being of same mind help them uh, settle their differences help them to be reconciled so he's saying i urge you right so he uses words like i implore i urge right these are uh, you know strong words in the sense he is he's really beseeching or imploring uh, and begging you know it's that it's that kind of a picture you know saying i'm i'm begging you do this i'm urging you do this you know this is of Im- utmost importance right to come to that place of unity so help these women to come to the place of unity um help these women to settle their differences and he's talking about clement also and he's saying you know they labored with me in the gospel okay so uh women ministers uh we know romans uh, the last chapter talks about a whole lot of people who are women apostles who are women and here also is referring to yudia and sintai who were women who labored with him in the gospel okay so preaching teaching um uh, the in the in the work of the gospel so so that's that's another information that we have that uh, there were people who labored in the gospel who were women okay and so also so it's uh, so there's there needn't be any difference today right uh in women women laboring for the sake of the gospel <clears throat> so he says and the rest of my fellow workers he mentions uh, these two women he mentions clement and he mentions a few people whose names are not mentioned but he says you know the rest of my fellow workers which means colleagues you know who worked alongside my team members so rest of my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life so well they are mentioned in the book of life they are believers they are continuing strong their names are mentioned in the book of life okay uh, so he's saying um help these people okay. rejoice in the lord always again i will say rejoice oh, something amazing here is paul in philippi in the prison writing to the, the, the uh, i'm sorry uh, writing to the church in philippi here is paul in, in a roman prison and and he is um, you know giving this instruction rejoice in the lord rejoice in the lord you know always and again i will say rejoice okay, so paul amazing uh, you know mindset and this it is this joy 
which is by the Holy Spirit, which really enabled him to continue in ministry. Right? Despite all the hardships, of course, he the love of the Lord constrained him, he says, um, and also the grace of God, he says, you know, the grace was given to me, and because of this grace, I strived even more, more than they all. So it's the love of God, the grace of God, the empowering of the Holy Spirit, obviously, right? and the work of the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, I'm sorry, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, which we see in Galatians 5.22, which talks about love, and the love of God being poured out into his heart by the Holy Spirit. So he's saying, you know, love and joy and peace. So this joy of the Lord, we know the joy of the Lord strengthens us. It gives new life, new strength to us. Takes away the weariness. Takes away the, you know, takes away all the fear. Because perfect, you know, love casts out fear. And this love of God, this joy... Uh, in the Holy Ghost um, gives us the ability and the strength to do things, uh, to go on despite difficulties, right? So he's saying, rejoice in the Lord. And he says, always, right? Not only when things are good, not only when things are, um, you know, everything is fine and everything is perfect. Well, rejoice in the Lord always, which means even when Things are not so fine, even when things are not so good, and even when things are very bad, rejoice in the Lord. Because we have always reason to rejoice in the Lord, because you are citizens of heaven and not of the earth. We are passing through the earth, but we are citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is secure in heaven. So he's saying rejoice in the Lord. Okay, so, um, you know, even in the same thing, same, um, uh, the book we saw, right? Philippians chapter 1, where he said, you know, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Verse 21. Philippians 1, 21. And then he mm -hmm. says, you know, uh, but if I live on in the flesh, this will mean fruit from my labor. Uh, verse 23. I'm hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. Right? So... This was his expectation. This is what he, you know, he. This is how he lived his life, with the expectation of the Lord's return and with the expectation to see the Lord. And uh, you know, and, and he's, he's saying, you know, for me to live is Christ. Yes, the purposes of Christ and everything would be accomplished. For me to die is gain, right? Which is even better because I'm I'm going to be in the uh, in the presence of God, pre presence of the Lord. Right? So rejoice in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Okay, So your characteristic, your disposition, um, let it be known to all men. Which means that um, this characteristic or this character, which is gentleness, um, it also means moderation, right? Um, equitable, meaning being fair, being moderate, being gentle. Okay. Now this quality, let it be known to all men. Okay. What does it mean? That means not going and saying, "Okay, I am gentle," but actually showing it in action. Right. Showing it through our life. Let it be known to all men. When you interact with another person, let this gentleness be shown. Let it be displayed. Uh, displayed. Let your gentleness be known to all men, because the Lord is at hand. Okay. The Lord is near. The Lord is at hand. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Now, we, you know, we've, maybe we've read this verse many times. We have used this verse many times. right? And uh, this is really... Uh, antidote or a solution for anxiety okay so he's saying be anxious so it's like a command be anxious okay so for what should i be anxious for nothing okay so he's saying he's giving that command no so he's he's using it the language is like this be anxious so it's a command okay i will be anxious for what should i be anxious for nothing right so which means that don't be anxious for anything Right? 
and then he gives a uh, he gives a solution be anxious for nothing but in everything which means that okay there were there will be times when you are tempted to be anxious when you are drawn to be anxious right when something is causing or knocking on the door of your heart to to bring in anxiety and anxiety is you know right there at the threshold knocking on the door of your heart so he's saying be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication okay by prayer supplication meaning request entreating god with thanksgiving prayer supplication thanksgiving okay um let your requests be made known to god now because of certain needs because of certain challenges there is a possibility that we might be prone to become anxious right we might be drawn to become anxious so he's saying you know in everything by prayer supplication thanksgiving like prayer and supplication bring it to god um you know pray to him uh request him and uh, with thanksgiving you know give thanks to him because he has heard your prayer give thanks to him because uh, you know scripture also talks about the fact that when you pray believe that you receive okay when you pray according to god's will you know you know that you have the things that you have asked for when he has heard your prayer you know the things that you have asked for so with thanksgiving give thanks to him by faith okay and he says that uh, let your request be made known to god okay. instead of being anxious do this prayer supplication thanksgiving and then he says in verse 7 and the peace of god okay what happens when you do this what happens when instead of getting anxious you bring your anxiety and you make it known to god in the form of request you know whatever is causing a problem whatever is a need whatever is a challenge bring it to god and you place it before him as a request as a supplication and uh, you know a supplication is again a strong word right which means uh, you seek you need uh, you know you're going with i mean you place your needs and you you know literally beseeching you know asking god so with thanksgiving when you do that when you make your request made known to god okay what is this it says and the peace of god okay it's a it's a beautiful thing the peace of god the peace that comes from god okay the harmony the 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 peace the you know it talks about uh, <clears throat> uh it's it's a state of mind it's a state of uh, you know lack of conflict uh, or it talks about harmony and tranquility right the peace that comes from god or the peace of god the kind of peace that god has you know that's what it means the quality of peace that god has you know the lord jesus is called the prince of peace okay, the source so this quality of peace or this this ability called peace or this characteristic called peace which comes from him and which is his possession really which passeth all understanding okay so all understanding which means it goes beyond our understanding which passes um which uh, you know circumvents which rises above even my understanding you know i'm not able to understand i still have questions oh, i'm not able to understand how i'm having this peace because that's the kind of peace right which goes beyond understanding what will it do it will keep your hearts and minds through christ jesus right it will keep meaning it will guard it will protect and the picture is that of a security guard a military guard one who is fully weaponized one who is fully you know uh uh is um uh, is dressed is armed um is dressed in the armor and is uh, armed with all the weapons that's the picture we have this peace which is the god kind of peace the kind of peace that god has the kind of peace that the prince of peace has right? that will guard your heart sense minds because that is the attack of anxiety right in our hearts and minds that's a place where anxiety 
you know, attacks or resides where we feel anxiety, anxious. So this peace will guard your heart. The very place that anxiety tries to get in, the peace of God will guard, right? Through Christ Jesus. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here, take a break, and then we'll uh, we'll come back.